Hey everyone, Castellan here, welcoming you to another LEGO Streetscape Tour. Featured in today's video is my latest modular mock, which is flanked by the Brick Bank on the left and the Pale Patties Pub on the right, the HVAC Workshop. And to justify the Streetscape Tour name, here is the building in its proper urban context. Just for fun, I populated the rest of the streetscape with uh, characters from some of the TV shows that I had on in the background while I built this building. Browsing on some of the greenery in front of the Pale Patties pub, we have a collection of rabbits on, the, on a little excursion from their warren at Watership Down. Then we have our HVAC building proper, and on the other side of it, in front of the brick, brick bank, we have an art, a character named Archer, who is using two short swords to duel a girl in a dress carrying a great sword who goes by the name of Arthur Pendragon. Yeah, I watched some weird shows while building this building, and to this day I'm not sure whether it was Fate Stay Night or Watership Down that took greater liberties with its source material. And along the back of the building we have characters from another TV show that I sometimes watch. Here we have the phenomenal AJ Styles. In a, engaged in a backstreet brawl with his arch-rival, Shinsuke Nakamura. Now, with all that silliness out of the way, let's get down to business and discuss the, the design criteria I had for this project. Which is to say, what were my goals, ideas, and plans for this building? Uh, the driving feature for this project was the sign that you see on the front of that building. I had built that sign well over a year ago, when I was just experimenting with uh, some that style of LEGO uh, lettering, and I've been just waiting for a chance to uh, put it on a building ever since. This just happened to be that time. And for the record, HVAC stands for Heating, Venting, and Air Conditioning, which, if you know anything about construction, is a vital part of putting together any real building. With that in mind, this building is meant to be a contractor's workshop, where minifigures fabricate ductwork, heating units, and various other bits of equipment that you see sitting on the roofs of my mocks and sometimes even official buildings. Being a workshop dictated the features and layout of this building, most of which you'll see as the video goes on. Uh, this facade, while probably the most detailed uh, facade of all the mocks I've built, was pretty much incidental to the layout of the building and was something that I just made up as I went along. Uh, the color scheme of this building is something new for me. Uh, tan, brown, a little bit of red. This color scheme was chosen because tan seemed appropriate for a workshop that was imagined as a part of the old industrial downtown. And the rest of the trim and whatnot, well, that just sort of happens. And here's an overview of the back facade of the building. Like the fronts, there was no real pattern or plan for this back facade. I just made it up as I went along, doing whatever seemed right for the interior of the building. Uh, you will also notice that I placed a few uh, exhausts and vents on the building, and that's mostly just because I was extra conscious of that sort of thing, since the whole purpose of the building was to be an HVAC workshop. And now we'll take a more detailed view of the ground floor of the building. We'll start off on the exterior, which, as I said before, is pretty plain, and was meant to be uh, reminiscent of those old-timey uh, brick and uh, limestone facades. Basically, whatever you think of when you think of an old industrial building. As you can see, I used a few textured bricks in this uh, facade, as well as a lot of snot building techniques. You'll also see that there really isn't any symmetry to this, and I did that because, well, I had to make room for the garage door. The garage door was part of the design criteria I had for this building. Specifically, I wanted to have a loading bay where equipment could be lowered from the workshop above into a custom truck and then driven off site. You will note that the loading bay is tiled with minifigure display plates. Uh, mostly because I had a lot of those plates and needed a way to use them, but it had they uh, using those plates ha uh, has an added bonus that the studs will actually uh, keep the truck from going too far and bumping into the back of the building. The garage door is also built of those minifigure display uh, display plates, 
with some flat plates covering up the studs. As you can see, hopefully, the garage door is hinged at the top, and it has some little stoppers on some snot blocks down below that keep the door closed and also make sure it hangs almost perfectly vertically. And now we'll take a moment to look at the custom truck I built for this project. The reason I felt a custom truck was warranted was because A, I needed a truck that matched the exact uh, dimensions that I had available for my garage, and B, I wanted to make sure the truck had a nice flat bed for me to put things in, as you will see a bit later on in the video. Beyond that, I really didn't have any plan for this truck. I simply started building with whatever colors and parts were available. Unfortunately, as you can see, the parts that were available were a very ugly lime green color and a lot of, well, not very trucky parts. Unfortunately, most of my good truck parts were already put to use in my Roustower truck, which I was not about to uh, take apart for something as silly as this project. So, next to the garage bay, we of course come to the lobby of the workshop. Naturally, the lobby has a front desk with a computer, lots of room to uh, spread paperwork and whatnot, and behind the desk, a bit of file cabinets and whatever else. Next to the entry, we have a display case full of brochures and whatnot. Along the back, we of course have the stairs up to the uh, second floor, and a brick-built door using a couple more of the minifigure base plates, which of course leads to a restroom. Not the most accessible restroom, but a restroom nonetheless. And moving up to the second floor, we come to the workshop proper, which is where this mock gets interesting. Starting out next to the stairs, we have a table and shelf where all the uh, spare parts are stored. You can see some various pipes, spare plates, panels, and vents and whatnot. And opposite that, right behind the front wall, we have a big workbench where currently a HVAC unit is being assembled. We've got a computer to basically display instructions, and all the way along that back wall, we have a basically a big storage rack for all the parts used to build something. When I was constructing this, I thought I had a bunch of uh, auto mechanics uh, parts that you get with those Speed Champion sets, but for whatever reason, I couldn't find those, which is too bad because it, I feel, it really would have uh, helped this building. Finally, we come to the centerpiece of this mock, the balcony, which overlooks the garage, which includes a sliding gantry crane to literally lift the HVAC units up, move them over, and drop them into, directly into the back of the flatbed of the truck. The gantry crane, of course, moves, and even includes a wench to literally lower it down. You will also see in the corner a mounting stand for a walkie-talkie so that the guy upstairs can coordinate with the guy downstairs. I may, not, may or may not have shown it, but downstairs there is also a mount for a walkie-talkie. And now, for the sake of completeness, here is the full process of loading the back of the truck. Move the gantry crane over. Drop the winch. And hopefully, you have to. Hopefully, the unit doesn't rotate too much on you. Get it into directly into the bottom, the back of the truck. Disconnect it. Move the crane back into place. And then move the truck straight up. Open the garage door and drive the truck straight out onto the road. Sometimes I think I'm a little too old to be enjoying a play feature like this, but oh well, it was fun to build. Before I dive too deep into the third floor, it might be worth taking a moment to look back on the facade of the building. You'll notice above the garage uh, door, 
I have just a flat surface that was done mostly for simplicity's sake. Uh, but to sort of disguise that, I did use some uh, snot te uh, building techniques to build some red trim basically onto the side of the second floor, which, as you can see, sort of matches a bunch of, well, comes close to matching a bunch of the other red trim throughout the building. I also spent a little bit of time building some uh, window awnings over the uh, windows, the actual windows in the third floor, as opposed to the tiny sorry excuse for windows on the second floor. And that awning actually uh, helps support the uh, upper floor trim, which lets the roof extend a little bit forward from the building, which gives the, fa which gives the facade just that much more depth. And as we move up to the third floor of this mock, we come to an apartment. Because a live-work unit just seems appropriate for a downtown building. The first thing to note is that the apartment itself is walled off and doored off from the workshop below. Just so we don't get the smell of gasoline or motor oil at the uh, dinner table. From the door, we come to a currently empty shelf and then a wall-mounted TV between two of the windows. In front of that TV, we have an easy chair, which could come, which could have come straight from the showroom of my corner office building. See one of my previous mocks. We have the aforementioned dinner table, and then the kitchen, which I'm rather proud of. There's a lot of stuff on the wall. There's a sink and sort of a drip, uh, sink with a drain built in. And then on this wall we have a bit of a hood, a range, and even something of a built-in oven. The bedroom of this apartment never quite became a room, but it's Lego. Space is at a premium. People understand. But the bed does have some end tables for whatever storage you may need. A few more shelves for more storage. And the bathroom, which is actually a room. We've got a corner sink, a toilet, and a bathtub, just because I wanted to be different with this unit. And rounding out this uh, mock, we have the roof. As you can see, there is a roof hatch, which opens into the landing rather than the residence itself, keeping that residence as private as possible. We have a rooftop unit that is much more intricate than usual for me. What can I say? I was working on an HVAC workshop. I felt like going all out on the HVAC unit. We also have a vent stack, which stacks over the wall of the bathroom. And looking at the front of the building, you will see that the ledge I mentioned in the facade does a nice job of hiding the basically parapet of the roof itself. And there you have it, the full streetscape tour of my latest modular mock, the HVAC Workshop. I was really excited while working on this. Not only was I finally putting together a building to go with my HVAC sign, but at the time I felt I was doing something truly innovative. I was building a light industrial modular building to fit into the downtown of my city. It even had a garage door going straight to the street. How many other people have something like that in their city? Not many. Other people's modular mocks are just restaurants or bars or pizzerias or townhomes or things like that. Nobody else has anything like this. At least they didn't until LEGO announced and then released the Corner Garage set. So now my modular mock, a light industrial workshop with a garage, uh, just feels like a cheap knockoff of the ideas and themes in that set. Oh well. Serves me right for not being prompt in recording this. In any case, please leave your thoughts, whatever they are, in the comments section below. If, if you liked what you saw, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and be sure to check out any of my previous videos. And with that, I will see you next time. Bye.